no one could make Jimmy Evans cry. His teacher couldn't, not even when she shamed him for being dirty. Mel couldn't, not even when him and his pack of toughs laughed at Jimmy's raggedy jacket. His father couldn't, not even when his belt buckle tore the skin off Jimmy's back. Crying was for children. Jimmy was fourteen, and a man now. Someone had to be. His mum was dead since three weeks, and his dad was a useless tosser, and there were days when the hunger got so bad he felt it would turn him inside out. Him and Ollie. They could take it. But Alfie cried so. He'd gone to the market a few hours ago, as the costas were packing up for the night, and had scraped three smashed apples off the cobbles, pulled two wrinkled potatoes out of the gutter, and gathered up a handful of bruised cabbage leaves. He'd hurried home with his gleanings, and Ollie had boiled them into a soup, doling it out by the teacupful. Alfie needed something hot. He was as pale as chalk and off his food. It was Alfie he thought of now as he stared up at the old factory's fourth-floor loophole, trying to work up his nerve. He thought of the baby's thin limbs and the dullness in his eyes, but it was the memory of the whimpers Alfie made after yet another fit of coughing that got him moving. With a wary glance up and down the dark street, Jimmy started to climb. Hands wedged in behind the heavy downpipe in front of him, feet flat against the sooty brick wall, he pulled himself up step by hard, slow step. In only minutes, every muscle in his body was on fire. Jimmy gritted his teeth against the pain and kept climbing, above the ground floor to the first floor, then the second all he had to do was to get up to the fourth floor, then step onto the window ledge, which was about two feet to the right of the drain pipe. He wouldn't be able to crawl into the factory through the window. Its metal panes were too small, but the glass was gone in many of them, and he could hold onto the mullions as he made his way across the ledge. It was the loophole he needed to get to, on the far side of the window. It had a pair of metal shutters. The hinge was broken on one of them, and the shutter was sagging open. Only a little, but a little was enough. He kept his eyes trained above him, but as he climbed past the third-floor window, he foolishly glanced down, and the street rushed up at him, whirling like a pinwheel. The sickening dizziness clawed at him, threatening to tear him off the downpipe. He closed his eyes against it, and visions flashed through his mind. Of his body arching through the air, of his skull smashing on the cobbles, and his courage trickled away like piss down a drain. Tosser, he hissed, banging his forehead against the pipe. Get hold of yourself. They needed food. Medicine for Alfie. The landlord wanted his back rent. The basement room they lived in was dark and damp, but it kept them together, and Jimmy knew that if they lost it, they'd be taken to the workhouse and split up. He and Ollie could survive it, but Alfie wouldn't last a week. He took a few deep breaths, then forced himself to open his eyes and keep climbing. A few minutes later, he reached the fourth floor. Now comes the hard part, he whispered. 